able now to bring out all of the ideas that are expressed here because they are all hidden and embodied in the structure of this ancient symbol. And, um, and by reaching into it, we can gain an interpretation and, um, and an understanding of the things that are going on in the world today. Uh, particularly that uh, tomorrow is what in the Jewish tradition uh, is Yom Kippur. And so just as the sun rises in the east every morning and sets in the west every evening, so the age that we are living in began in the east 2,000 years ago approximately. We have now come the seven great epic days to where we are observing the high holy days here at the western ends of the earth. And we are commanded at this time to lift up the voice and blow the trumpet in the new moon. The voice of the, with the lift up the voice of God that is within us and sound the alarm and lift up the voice and sound the trumpet. trumpet. In Zion. Blow a trumpet in Zion. That's exactly right. And of course the moon is a symbol of the return of the divine feminine principle to her rightful place in the order of things. And that's why we see that the world is out of balance. And that's why we see for 2,000 years, males have been ruling over the earth. And now in the book of Revelation, it says that I saw a great wonder, a woman clothed in the sun. And she had the moon under her feet. She was uh, crowned with a crown of 12 stars. Well, she's crowned with the majesty of the universe itself because God is our mother as well as our father. And she has been hiding. Pardon me? Where is that scripturally that God is our mother also? Well, it begins in the book of Genesis where the scripture says, let us create man in our image. Let me see that. Let us? Let oh, sure. me see the word us. Oh, okay. What translation is this? This is a King James Version. It's King the James most James standard version we use here in America. And it says here, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish. I was under the impression the that, was Adam around at that time? No. Well, they, God is now preparing to make Adam, create he Adam. He hasn't. So close. It says, let, so us, let, us, let us make man in our image. And then now, we, where does Adam come in? Well, right here. Now this is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. But how do you get that the woman thing? I don't understand. Well, because God is not just father, God is mother as well. So, it, it, and I'm sorry, go ahead. So, well, well, see what it says here. So, male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam. He didn't call her Eve and him Adam. They called her Adam and he, him Adam. They are both man. They are both in, of course, the Christian point of view is that when the first Adam fell, the second Adam appeared. Who was the second Adam? The second Adam is that which, in the Christian point of view, is Christ, is Jesus, is... So how can we, we're taught in most Pentecostal churches that there is just well, God because is a man or... or a male being or well that's because in most you see because the divine mother who is also creator who is also according to the scriptures see the book of proverbs is all about her all the uh, she is the book of proverbs is about wisdom that's exactly that's who she is she is wisdom she is a tree of life to all them who gain hold on her that's the whole book of wisdom the whole book of proverbs um, and also many other books is about her divine presence See, her, wisdom crieth without. Her name is Sophia, but I'm, she's also our divine mother. I studied Pentecostal well, for yes. 20 years, and I've never been taught this. Well, this is because that is an, a fundamentalist, a fundamentalist, literal interpretation of the word. That when you study in the doctrines of the Kabbalah, what you're doing is you're transcending literal interpretations. You're moving up into the so higher world. So you deal world. with the Kabbalah? I thought the Kabbalah dealt yes. with a lot of Jewish mysticism. Uh, of course, but which also leads to Christian mysticism because you can't be one without the other. And then it leads to Islamic mysticism. It leads into a whole field of understanding the scripture from a higher, well, I don't want to use the word higher in a derogative way, but in another way that transcends the literal interpretation of the word. And so, 
Because the Divine Mother has hidden herself in the garments of her own creation, she appears as this. Wisdom crieth without, she uttereth her voice in the streets, she crieth in the chief places of the concourse, in the opening of the gates. She uttereth her voice, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delighting in their scorning, and the fools hating knowledge. Turn ye at my reproof, and behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. She is the Holy Spirit. She's, she's the feminine manifestation of God. And she is now revealing herself in the mystery of the unfolding realities in our time. She, when, see, when the sun rose upon the earth 2,000 years ago, she went into hiding. That's why it says... Can you show me that scripture? Sure. I can, I can build the structure of it. For behold, the day cometh. This is the last book in the Old Testament. Okay. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. But unto you that fear my name, I, I, I. this is Malachi, shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. You're talking the literal son up there. I'm talking that the literal son is a metaphor for that event that happened 2,000 years ago Meaning when the what? light the and the of life of God's presence appeared in the earth in the mystery of Christ. As it was taught by John the Baptist, as it was expounded upon by Paul, and as we are now experiencing its unfolding. And it says, and when the sun rose upon the earth 2,000 years ago, not only did Christianity come to power, and that was the time of Passover, but the Apostle Paul said, and now the mystery of evil begins. Because in Christianity is coming all of the iniquity in the earth. I thought the iniquity of the earth was brought about when um, the fall of man. That's exactly right. Okay, the fall of man, when and Adam but, sinned. But in Christ, when Christ came... We have came, redemption in Christ. We have redemption, but in Christ, not only will the light come to perfection, but the evil will come to perfection too. I agree. So that's I the agree. mystery of iniquity. Now it says here... Iniquity means sin though, right? Yes, of course. Uh, it means being absent from the light. It means being in darkness, okay. being in ignorance. Okay. And it says here, now remember not that when I was with you, I told you these things, and now you know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. And that's why Moses said, cursed, see Moses looking into our time said, cursed every bee, everyone that hangeth on a tree. And okay, I thought they had to do when, um, that's why the Judas, Jews, after he betrayed Jesus for the 30 some odd pieces yes, of silver, because I thought that had to do with him hanging himself. Yes, because Judas is a symbol of the Antichrist who will come in the last time. But we, I, Judas is, 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 the, is an archetypal individual. Judas is a, is a character in a divine mystery play that is unfolding. He's the 12th apostle and he's the son of darkness just as... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. This one here mm -hmm. is also the one who comes as a minister of righteousness and as an right. angel Wasn't of light. Right, wasn't he supposed to have been some type of a preacher's son or well, a pastor or something because, like that? Because he's the one we're commanded to watch for. The one who comes magnifying himself in his heart and he's like a Judas character. He's carrying the bag. He's the one that will betray his master with a kiss. Yeah. But that's you're, why it says wait, here. You're literally saying Jimmy Carter. Oh, I'm literally saying that, yes. That's why it says here that let no man deceive you by any means that that day shall not come except that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is God, or that all that is worshipped of God, that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, it's not just Jimmy Carter. It is everyone who sits in the seat of the scornful. Scripture says that you have heard that the Antichrist shall come, but even now there are many Antichrists. Yeah, but I've heard that the Antichrist could possibly be one of the former, former Roman emperors. Well, that's exactly. The United States is modern Rome. Yeah. The United States, you see, when Revelation 13 says, I saw a beast come up out of the sea, and it says, and the beast had seven heads. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads. Well, the seven heads of this beast 
are the seven world empires that have risen up oh, I'm sorry. in the course of history since the time of Aaron and Moses. The first beast, the first head of the beast is Egypt. Then came the Assyrians, they destroyed Egypt and they established themselves as the power. Uh -huh. Then came the Babylonians, then came the Persians, then came the Greeks, and then came the Romans. And when the Romans appeared, the scripture says, now here is the mind that hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains, which means seven political empires, on which the woman sitteth, which is false religion. False religions. Right. What are false religions? Well, religions that attach themselves to the powers of this earth instead of walking in holiness and in separateness. Would you say Islam is a false religion? No. Islam is, is a true religion as well as Christianity, as well as all the religions of the earth. But in these religious structures, mm -hmm. in them are the institutions of the world that are prostituting themselves to the powers of the earth. I agree. But in among them are the children of light walking among okay. uh, these uh, religious structures. Okay. So we have true Muslims. To be a true Christian is to be a true Muslim, is to be a true Jew, is to be a uh, true one of all those things that God is. So, does that have something to do with how a lot of the three major religions, religions subjugate women? Yeah. Because they don't recognize what the, you've just the told The Divine me? Mother, that's exactly right, you see, because she's hiding. But this is, you see, you see, when the scripture, when these books began to be written, the Divine Mother herself, who is wisdom, she's the author of these books. She is inspiring individuals, and because she is going to bring to pass the mystery of iniquity, she has to show the world what imbalance looks like. And in order to do that, she had to let males rule the earth until we came to the day of restoration. So now we come to the ends of the earth, and this is where we are, and this is the end of the age, when we see now we are now here at the male side of the tree of life. And that's why the world is completely out of balance, but it's from the feminine side of the tree of life is coming not only the balance, but is coming the messiahs. And that's why the scripture says, that's why the scripture says that, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and she has the moon under her feet. The reason the moon is under her feet, see, because this is the feet of the mystery, is that she has this notion that females are inferior. Now she's going to trash that. She's going to put that under her feet. And she, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars, well, she is crowned with the majesty of the universe itself because she is God. But the book of Revelation is very cryptic. Well, of course, and it's that's because very, very... she made it that way. She is divine wisdom. She's the one, she's the author. And now she is descending to us here at the western ends of the earth, and this is where we are. And it says, and she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. What the Divine Mother is doing now, is she's bringing birth? forth, she's giving birth to a child. In the same way that she gave birth to this age 2,000 years ago, she is now giving birth to a new age. And that new age is going to be founded in the principles of, first of all, enlightenment, a higher state of consciousness, justice, peace. Justice means justice between all things that are out of balance. The the, the feminine principle is now returning to her rightful place in the scheme of things. And that's why Isaiah says, when we come to the, and this is where we are, where we're observing the high holy days, Isaiah the prophet says, in that day shall the moon shine as bright as the sun. And the moon being, of course, the feminine principle. Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun. And that means the light of the feminine principle shall be as the light of the male principle. The light of the Divine Mother Goddess shall be as the light of the Father God. And the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days. The seven is God's perfect number. And this is where we are. That's why we're celebrating and observing the high holy days in the seventh month because we have now come to the end of the age because God is now getting ready to bring forth a new age. And that's why it says here, and there shall be upon every high mountain and upon every high hill 
rivers and streams of water in the day of the great slaughter when the towers fall. And we are now experiencing these events. This thing happened before our very eyes last week because God is now shaking the foundation of the male ruled world. He's getting ready to bring a judgment against Islam who does not read the Quran correctly, against Christianity who does not read its scriptures correctly, against all the powerful, against the violent ones, against all the rich. So you're saying this is God's um, way of, getting, of have, giving people a wake-up call? Yes, he's shaking us, he's shaking the earth. That's why the book of Hebrews says that God will shake mightily the earth so that those things that cannot be shaken may remain. So you think God would sacrifice one to save ten? If God spared not his only son, why would God spare any living thing? Because life is, um, life, death is an illusion. The scripture says, in God is life and there is no darkness at all. That means that there is no such thing as death. Death is only an illusion that second, God... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Well, death is just simply an illusion that only has meaning in our dimension. But in reality, death is just a path is way to life. And well, every day we're dying. Exactly. Every day that we there live, you go. we're dying. Exactly, so. exactly. That's exactly um. right. Death is the sacrament that leads to life. And all those people that were in that tower, as horrible and as tragic as that was, if they were walking in God's light, they are not dead. Their bodies are crushed in the there. Their bodies are gone. Uh, right. But what the about rest the spirit? Of, of course, the spirit goes up right. with the God who gave it. They're not dead. They're, they're not dead. I agree. I they're, agree. they're all alive, even though it seems very tragic. These events came from God in order to shine a light on the mind of darkness itself. And all the wicked ones in the Western world, God is now inviting to meet him in the day of the great battle. And that's why. Well, to get back to the male and female thing. Remember the Apostle Paul said, Now, I command a woman to be silent, and that I also command her to be covered. Yes. Right? And if she will not be covered, then let her be shorn. Mm -hmm. Well. You, when you said you meant silent in the church. Well, that's what Paul said. Right, 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 right. But, did he say, let the female be silent? No, no. He didn't say that. Why are we taught that? Well, well, because that's the interpretation that we get from our... Uh, from reading the scriptures literally instead of metaphorically and allegorically. You see, the Apostle Paul, he says, Now I command the woman to be silent, and if anyone thinketh himself spiritual, let agree, him agree with me that the woman must be quiet. Well then, what he's saying is if you're spiritual, you will understand that I am not commanding the female to be silent, I am commanding the church to be silent. I am commanding the pastors, the rabbis, the imams, everyone who does not know that the word female and the word woman do not mean the same thing. And that's why he says here, now, he's talking Ephesians 5. He says, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and he shall be joined unto his wife, and they shall be to be one flesh. That's now marriage, you, am I okay, correct? Okay, exactly. And he's talking about Adam and Eve, right? right. Well, is he? Yeah, he's talking, you see, uh, Adam and Eve are bone of each other's bone and, and flesh of each other's flesh. It says, For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. That's I thought right. they members of Christ's body. E exactly, because Christ is the new Adam. But Christ says he's the bride. No, he's we are the bride. bride. We, we're the bride. We're the he's bride. the bridegroom. Okay, so we're the feminine. We're the females. And he's, and the, he's male. the male. Okay, now, but it, and it, see, even if I'm a male, I'm a bride, right? So in the scripture, so in the right. relationship, I'm a woman. In the spiritual order, exactly. So it says here. Now, for we are all members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. So he's making an allusion to Adam and Eve. But this cause you shall a Barry? man. Pardon me. You would Barry. Barry who? Barry. Check. I don't I don't know. Are the poor gonna be saved? Who? The poor. Oh, yes. Everybody's on their way. All to that's poor go to save. Blessed are the poor. Blessed are the poor in spirit. What about the rich? Woe to the rich. Woe to the they rich. They have to repent. The rich have to repent, but not the poor. The uh, poor have to repent for the sins of the poor. 
but it's easy for them to repent because they're poor and they're rich in faith. Rich in faith. Yes. What's up, Mike? I, hey, how you doing, Mike? Hey, no sleep, man. I always keep you in prayer. Thank you. I needed it, and uh, you've done your good work. Good. Keep up the he good says, work. For this course shall a man leave his father and mother hey, and shall me, be joined unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Now he's alluding to the book of Genesis where Adam and Eve were one flesh. But this is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. Now, who is Christ? Is Christ a male person? Absolutely not. Because it says here, till we come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. So win of doctrine could just could mean on false religions. That false and also false, false doctrines, people, false teachings. So you see, here we have come to where we are on this is the Christian side of the tree of life. But this is also the Jewish side of the tree of life here. And the Jewish side is the feminine side of the tree of life. And that's why it says, until we come in the unity of the faith unto the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man. Well, who's a perfect man? No one is. It's not a male person. A male person is not the perfect man. We're not perfect as long as we're in, 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 the, in the flesh. Can well, the scripture says, but be ye perfect, be so that your Father in heaven... You can be perfect. We want to tell you to do but something. But in perfect in love. But you sin every day. Of How course. How can I be perfect? Not moral, sinless perfection. You saw me. I don't understand what he means by perfect but, then. But, you're already... So I'm at a stage of maturity. Yeah. Where you're at now, you're perfect. When, 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 once you come to, once you come, once you come to the maturity in Christ, that's what Paul says. Until you come to the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ, once you are walking in true Christ consciousness, okay. even your sins are constantly always being re uh, forgiven. You know that. But I thought once you, the Bible says, "For there is therefore now no condemnation exactly. for those who are in Christ Jesus." That's what I'm saying. So you're walking in the light. So for those that are in Christ Jesus. For those yeah. who are in Christ yeah. Jesus. And then he says, "Abide in Christ." So it's possible for you to be born again and not abide in Christ. I agree. Okay. And I agree. for that person, there's condemnation, even though they've been to born, be born again. again but they condemn not themselves. To follow the examples of Christ. But Paul but says they will condemn again, themselves. Yeah, we can Every man will judge themselves in the day that this gospel is revealed. But then it's it says good, yes. here now, it's Paul not. is saying, until you understand this, this is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that Mike God created man, in the likeness of God made he him, okay. and male and female created he them and blessed them well, and called their and name female. Adam. In other words, you're not Eve. Okay. Paul is not telling you to be covered. He's not telling you to be silent. He's telling the woman to be silent. And he's, the woman is anyone, regardless of whether they are male or female, who do not understand that the word female and woman do not mean the same thing. You see, because Paul says, if anybody thinks himself as a prophet, let him agree what I say. The woman shall be silent. And then he's saying, but the male and the female are both men. You see, one time I was in a, in, in a, a, a gathering and uh, there was a bunch of women who were covered. And Not all, like I'm covered. Like you're covered, but they had a, a different, different, different cover. And they were asking this one woman at the table, how come she doesn't wear a cover? Mm -hmm. So the woman said to them, my husband is my cover. And they accepted that. Okay. And then they said to my wife, well, why aren't you covered? Well, and she said, because I am not a woman. Because I am a man in Christ. And therefore, I am equal to my husband. I am one with my husband. And I am not his inferior. He does not rule over me. I do not rule over him. But we are in harmony. A man is male and female. Exactly. Okay, I hear what you're saying. Are you a Christian? Well, sure she is. She's a Muslim Christian. Oh, a Muslim Christian. No, I just, just She's a true I'm just child of God. I practice, yes, so. Oh, oh, oh. Sure. I'm just kidding. I was in the Pentecostal faith for over 20 years. Sure. So, are you? Yes, yeah, so this is why I'm asking a lot of sure. questions that I have never been taught. So, or the way I've read it. You're Islamic, though. Yeah. Well, yeah, but you see, the scripture says where the spirit of Christ is, there is liberty. Right. So once we put on Christ for ourselves, whether we're male or female, and we attain 
we put on the new man, which is Christ. The old heaven. man, but wait a minute, I'm sorry. The old man is the story. The old man is the story. The old man is the, the sins that's been washed away when you bring Jesus into Yeah, but it's also the old interpretations. Get a cup of coffee. No, 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 no. I can't. Get a cup of coffee. That's on me. All right, Brother Mike. Thank you. I love you. I'll see you at the, at the wedding. Well, I'll pass this along. <laughs> and, um, um, once the old man is destroyed, not only is our old inclinations, our old temptations, our old sins, but also the old interpretations. My lower interpretations of the scripture are also destroyed because now I come alive in Christ and I realize that Christ is not a male person at all. Christ is a male and a female. A male and a female, but isn't a spirit made? Pardon me? Isn't Christ a spirit? Christ is a spirit that dwells in every male and female. But if you accept him into your heart. No, all right, sure. I'm no, just asking, no, I'm no. He, the Christ dwells everywhere. That's why Paul says we must awake to this realization. Awake, awake, that Christ will give thee life. Jesus is everywhere, whether that person doesn't know it or not. Jesus was in the Osama bin Laden, who was bringing judgments against the Western world. Jesus is the Lord. There's nothing but him. It's only those who are awake. That's why Paul says we have the mind of Christ, so therefore we can perceive Christ within us. But Jesus, who is Lord, dwells in all living beings. He is all who he, he is all who fills all also. He's the son of all reality. He's the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. He is judging the He's judging the earth right now. It, it, it's it, it, there is no man. else. I, mean, I do believe what happened on September 11th was a judgment. Against the system of Antichrist. Which, uh, this has been going. This has been coming back since the day Jesus died. So. And of course, that's not complete yet because Christ is still dying. It's like Paul says, if the leaders of the world knew, they would not crucify the Lord of Glory. Well, the Lord of Glory was crucified in the death of any living individual that dies for righteousness. Sake. Not since the time of Christ, but even until now. The even sacrifice still has to be offered by those who will come, in the book of Revelation it says, and that they will defeat the Antichrist by the word of their testimony and the blood of the Lamb, and they shall not, they shall love out their lives to the dead. Because it moves in our time, those who are getting ready to fulfill that sacrament. Okay. And, I like and don't forget to see the dragon. Take a look. Can I just uh, just go right around here? Take a look at the continent of Europe. You see that the continent, he's making fun of me because I've said this 2,000 no, times this week. <laughs> you see the continent of Europe is a great big dragon with its mouth wide open. See, Italy is the tongue sticking out of the dragon's mouth. Europe is the head of this great creature. Scandinavia is the right arm. Asia Minor is the left arm. And all of Asia is the body and the tail of this great, enormous dragon. Can you see it? Somewhat, yeah. Well, see the mouth wide open? That's the mouth right there. And there's the tongue. Oh, that's the tongue. Yeah, oh, that's and there's the mouth wide open. And Europe is the head of this great dragon. And there's the right arm, right there. And there's the left arm, right there. And all of Asia is the remainder of the body of this great dragon and that's why the divine mother now is revealing all her mysteries because it says so we are living in a book of revelations now sure because it looks says here the woman she's bringing forth her child and then there appeared another wonder in heaven behold a great dragon and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered to devour her child and as soon as it is born well once you see that the dragon is the earth then you can understand what it says here. And there was war in heaven, and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, and he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Well, this devil is that spirit that deceives the church into making you think that you should stay covered because you're a woman when you're not, when you're a man in Christ. And you see, the dragon, the war in heaven that Michael is fighting against the dragon, well, what you have to do is simply see that the dragon is the earth. The apostle Paul said, be of good cheer, for Christ shall put Satan underneath our feet shortly. And once you understand that the dragon is the earth, you see that God took the earth and created us. So now, where does this serpent live? 
The serpent lives within me. It lives within every single individual. And the only war that we are allowed to fight, which is the war Michael is fighting, is the war against his own lower nature. That is the only war that we are allowed to fight. Spiritual wickedness in high places, which is in the high places of my mind. And when I bring my whole mind under subjection, right. then I will be walking in a state of Christ consciousness and this serpent will be destroyed. Mm -hmm. And that's why the scripture says in one place, if any man curseth Satan, he curseth his own soul. And that's because that's where Satan dwells. J Satan dwells in the seat of the heart. That's the, Jesus well, said. Well, the Bible says, out of abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking, the heart is above all deceitfully wicked. Exactly. Okay, the heart is very, very wicked. So I've come to saying, I will, I will never say something I will never do because I may say I won't do it, but I may wind up doing it anyway. Exactly. Exactly. So that's what we are defeating. So once that we are walking in this state of Christ consciousness, as Paul says, that bringing all thoughts into subjection to the obedience of Christ. It says here, now, I, now I beseech you that you may not be you, that you may not be bold when I am present. It says here, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after, war the, after flesh. the flesh. Well, that's right. what they're doing. That's what they're, they're doing. They're getting ready to wage carnal war against who they perceive to be their enemy, because they have not defeated the evil in themselves and therefore they think evil is out there and gotcha. they don't realize that they are going out to make war against God. I agree. That's what it is. That's yeah. what they're doing. They're getting ready to fight God. That's exactly right. And I agree. And it says, for the, we, for the weapons of our warfare, warfare are our not carnal, carnal but the mighty. The mighty of God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every thought that bring it to self, I think, unto this above Jesus, I can't remember exactly. that And bringing into captivity every, every thought, thought to the, obedience. and that's what we must do, bring our thoughts. Hello, how are you? Bringing our thoughts into the obedience to, to Christ. And then it says, and after that, having done that, then having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience, when your own obedience is fulfilled. Once our obedience is fulfilled, then we may make war. I, I'm sorry, I gotta go. I gotta okay. work. But it's been great. God I mean, bless you. God you, bless have, you. You have the card? I have it. Thank you. I, All right. I, I work in Jersey, so I got to go. Okay. Let me ask Just you before you leave, though. You, as a Muslim, I know Muslims study from the Quran and everything. I spent 20 years in the Pentecostal church. I see. <laughs> How much do you read as far as the Bible compared to the Quran? Uh, That's a long story. That's a long story. Okay. I understand. Okay. Take care. Church like is... Show you right here. The prophet Isaiah. Says, in that day, seven women. You see the, that term seven women? Well, this is where we are. And the term woman applies to the church. That's why Paul says that I um, that we are like the brides waiting. For Christ, the Bible. And so we are the woman. Christ says, when I speak of Adam and Eve, this is a great mystery, but I speak of Christ and the church. So the church is the woman in the spiritual order of things. When the prophet Isaiah says seven women, he's talking about all of the whole church, the millions and millions and millions of Christians that are here in the West in our time, says, they shall take hold of one man. Now, you see this place here? We're observing the high holy days. The sun is setting at the western ends of the earth. Right in the midst of all of the unfolding events of our time. And we are blowing the trumpet in the new moon. Well, the new moon is a sign of the return of the feminine principle to her rightful place in the order of things. So having come here, we are right here. And this is the end of the age, and this is the Christian side of the tree of life. But here, right here, that is the Jewish side of the tree of life. And the Jewish side of the tree of life is the feminine side. And the Christian side of the tree of life is the male side of the tree. Now we have come to the end of the age, and Isaiah says, this, of course, is answering the question if the church is going to observe a tribulation. Isaiah says, 
First of all, there shall be upon every high mountain and every great nation, and upon every high hill, rivers and streams of waters in the day of the great slaughter and the powers of hell. God has already begun. 